welcome to the Thursday edition of DC Today. I just returned moments ago from being on Fox with Larry Kudlow after the market had closed, and we'll have the clip of that in DC Today. But rather than go back to the office to record, I'm recording in my apartment before heading out for a dinner tonight. And so uh, that's the change of scenery. I always like you to know where I am. Uh, my life's an open book. What can I say? The market rallied today. Dow was up over 330 points, about 1%. S&P was up uh, almost 1%. Uh, same for the NASDAQ. They were down uh, up a little bit less, 81 basis points for the NASDAQ, 84 basis points for the S&P. But nevertheless, a big rally led by one and three quarter percent move higher in real estate and a one and a half percent, nearly one and a half percent increase in utilities. Both of those sectors having been I think quite oversold. Uh, and the worst performing sector, this is a very rare day, uh, but the worst performing sector was up, and that was healthcare was up a quarter of a percentage point. So those are real rally days, and just like real sell off days when every sector is down, real rallies when every sector is up, a lot of breadth. Um, economically, European Central Bank raised their uh, funding rate to 4%, which some were wondering if they would do less than that. And then bond yields all fell. And I just can't emphasize enough the reality of markets discounting ahead what they believe about the future. Why would bond yields fall when the, the uh, funding rate went higher than expected? It would be the bond market, for right or for wrong, believing that this may be the end of it and that the next step would be lower. And so it gets priced ahead of time. Um, the U.S. bond market did a similar thing with the Fed and ended up being wrong. That's very rare, but it can happen. And so that, that would explain the European bond move today. Um, job hirings have slowed the pace of them, but people wonder why the unemployment number still looks so good and why the initial jobless claims are still so low. It's because even if you have a slightly lower pace of hirings from a base of low unemployment, and then you have a very low pace of firings, then you just simply don't see the, the numbers move a lot. But that's the case right now. Hirings have slowed, firings have slowed, and I think a lot of employers are kind of in a waiting pattern based on what they had dealt with before with the labor shortage. Uh, so our bond yield today, the 10-year, closed to 4.288%. It was up four basis points. Yesterday, you recall, it had been down four or five basis points. And oil did close above $90, closed at 90.61, up nearly 2.5%. So obviously that oil move continues to move higher. You saw that in the producer price index, by the way. It was up 0.7% um, in August, but only up 1.6% year over year. And energy wholesale prices were up 10.5%, where food wholesale prices in August had declined. And intermediate processed goods year over year are down That's in deflation. So you, energy is kind of the story in prices, no question. Retail sales were up 0.6% in August. Um, they're up 2.5% versus a year ago. So mostly price increases, not volume of, of goods moving that higher. Uh, the Ask David today, I answer the question as to what I mean when I talk about a country exporting their deflation. I encourage you to go to thedctoday.com to see that answer. I'm going to leave it there. I do thank you for listening, watching and reading the DC Today, and I look forward to coming at you tomorrow with the Dividend Cafe. Mm -hmm.